Busri is in traditional textbooks is considered to be a seat of civilization. This site flourished as one of the major ports to the spice trade. It was at one of the pivotal points between the east and west trade. The port was very prosperous until it disappeared in the 14th century. The mystery of India's ancient port of Muzariz has captivated archaeologists for decades. Once at the heart of one of the world's most influential trading routes and written about in 2,000-year-old Sangam literature, for centuries the port of Muzariz was a hub of interaction between South India and Persia, the Middle East, North Africa and the Roman Empire in the Mediterranean. The second century map of the whole Roman Empire in which Muzariz is marked. So Musuris was a reality and Musuris was um, a port to which Roman ships were coming. So they came in search of pepper. Pepper was considered to be equivalent to gold. It was called black gold and all that. And pepper was such a fascinating item. The overseas traders were ready to take to any risky adventures to go to places for procuring pepper. Once hailed by Roman author Pliny the Elder as the first emporium of India, Muzariz was known for its opulence, frequented by ships carrying spices, gems, ivory and silk. However, suddenly, in the 14th century, it was no more. Seemingly wiped off the map, the great port of Muzariz disappeared without a trace. Some historians argue it fell with the decline of the Roman Empire. Others trace it to the devastating floods of Perea in 1341. To this day, there is still huge debate over Muzariz's true location. In 2006-07, there was excavation started in certain parts, especially in Patanam, revealed strong trade relations with the Mediterranean and the European countries, which led to the present discovery of the Port Muzariz. I, as the director of Patanam excavations, managed 12 seasons of excavations. So the excavations brought out a huge volume of evidences, which speaks about the multicultural character. Nearly 37 cultures belonging to Asia, Europe, and Africa. Here, from 93 centimeters down, we were getting materials from all over the world. We have selected samples for dating, but from stratigraphic and typological evidence, we feel we are at the peak phase of the Musaris at this level. The excavations at Patanam have unearthed many fascinating finds, from gold ornaments to glass beads to early Chera coins. In 2020, a rare Roman Sphinx seal ring, similar to the one worn by Augustus Caesar before he became Roman Emperor, was discovered at the Patanam site. You're getting all these things in a small village like Patanam and you were not finding it anywhere else. What it means? This helpless little island called Patanam was an integral part of Muslims. This could be the modern New York or modern Shanghai or Mumbai. However, not all historians are convinced that Patanam is the true location of the ancient port of Muzariz. Historians have been talking about the existence of a civilization on the basis of these fine pottery, wine jars and garam jars and so on. The people immediately concluded that these were the objects imported by the Eastern Mediterranean. Yeah, in a way imported, but for their own purpose. You don't find any of these items penetrating into the interior. I wrote a paper in search of Musris. That was based on a thorough study of the Krangnur area. And then we concluded that it could be somewhere near a tributary and closer to Krangnur. The controversy going on whether it's Patanam is this Musris or Musris is Patanam. Looking at the historical records, Musris is a very, very large area. So I think the whole area which will cover both sides of the river Peria could be part of the 
original Mercedes. I strongly believe that much more history is buried below the ground. It had trade relationship with uh, many ancient civilization of the Middle East. Similarly, later all these Portuguese, Dutch colonial forces also came to the same place. So we had this continuous history of, uh, you know, uh, trade. It was following the mysterious disappearance of Muzaras in the 14th century that the port city of Kochi rose to significance as a key centre of trade in this part of India. And to this day, Kochi and Muzaris continue to share a close connection. In 2012, the Kochi Muzaris Biennale was established as India's first ever biennial of international contemporary art, aiming to bring together the cosmopolitan spirit of modern Kochi and the mythical past of Muzaris as a hub of global culture. Kochi and Musiris used to be uh, receivers and all the time it, it received not only really culture, you know, not only really had the trade relationship, but you know, we, we had all really religious component, you know, in a way this is an ideal, ideal place, I would say, a secular place we could build or, you know, come together in this land and this, that is one of the reasons I think, you know, uh, the Biennale also play an important role, you know, when we bring artists from around the world. Musiris is like mother for us. There is a kind of umbilical code relationship with uh, Musiris and Kochi. While the historical debate over the exact location of Musiris continues to rumble on, the archaeological evidence makes it clear that this part of India was a melting pot of global cultures, exchanging commodities and ideas, over centuries. And although India's first emporium may have vanished from the map, its legacy can still be felt today.